DFM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In this bulletin, High Court rules Sadapa AGM in Savo Savo invalid. 27 COVID-19 tests return negative. And LTA revenue down 50%. From the studios of FBC Suva, Ateva Lendua. The Suva High Court has today declared that the annual general meeting held in Savu Savu by some Sadapa members were in breach of the party's constitution. The court also declared the decisions, resolutions, and the outcomes of the AGM conducted on June 28, 2019, invalid. Sadapa Suva constituency president Watisoni Nata and his group had taken the matter to court, claiming that the Sadapa election held in Savu Savu last year and subsequent actions thereafter were done in breach of not only the party constitution, but also the Political Parties Act 2013 and the Constitution of Fiji. The court declares that the election of Ro Filipe Tuisawao as president and Andi Litiengioni Maravi as vice president were invalid. The High Court also declared that all the subsequent actions, meetings, resolutions, decisions, directives and outcomes of the management board following that AGM, including the acceptance of Yoni Barravi's retrospective resignation and the appointment of Usaya Wangatairewa as the general secretary, were or are unlawful, invalid and inactive. The court further declared that Ngyoni Ravi has ceased to be a member of the management board by certain section of the Sadapa constitution. The defendants have been ordered to pay plaintiffs $2,000 within 14 days. Dissenting members of the Social Democratic Liberal Party say the court ruling today on the legal challenge by certain party members is a victory for democracy. The plaintiffs in a statement say it is a victory for good governance, accountability to the party's voters and supporters, and confirmation that the party's members have the legal right to seek the court's intervention in circumstances such as these. According to the plaintiffs, they are grateful that the court has ruled and enlightened everyone that the Sadapa AGM held in Savu Savu was botched and manipulated by party officials. Therefore, it has been ruled null and void. For the third day in a row, Fiji has recorded no new cases of the deadly COVID-19 virus. Prime Minister Borege Bainamarama says the 27 tests conducted last night have all returned negative. This means Fiji's total number of cases remains at 18, with eight of these fully recovered. Prime Minister Bainamarama is reminding Fijians to continue taking precautionary measures and adhere to measures in place to counter coronavirus. He says people need to work together with health officials to ensure that Fiji continues to win the fight against COVID-19. An individual who was arrested for social gathering yesterday afternoon tried to bribe a police officer. The 40-year-old lecturer from Nakasi was found drinking alcohol with two others in deep water settlement in Korovo. All three were arrested and charged for social gathering breaches. Police allege the suspect then offered $500 to the police officer to release him from custody. The same individual is also charged with drunk driving. Also arrested in police operations last night were seven individuals who were caught drinking alcohol at the Wunisir Jetty in Kandavu. Five of them were contractors working in Kandavu, while two were from Wunisir Village. There were a total of 46 arrests for COVID-19 restriction breaches in the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, Health Minister Dr. Fremi Wanganambete has clarified that restrictions on social gathering remains in place. Dr. Wanganambete says, therefore, the number of people attending funeral and burial services should remain less than 20. He says family members should be responsible and adhere to the limited numbers. Land Transport Authority's Chief Executive Samuel Simpson says their revenue pool has been affected due to COVID-19. 
Simpson says in light of the preventative measures to combat the spread of the virus, they have had to suspend a number of services, which has affected half of their earnings. The LTA has suspended defensive driving courses and driver's licensing, with a number of their branches experiencing a drastic decrease in customers due to social distancing measures in place. Uh, we collected about 73 million uh, in total. So we're sort of 45 to 50 percent down uh, this far into the into the year, and of course bear in mind that um, COVID has had a, a very dramatic impact uh, because government quite rightly put in place a series of measures to uh, restrict movement. The Fiji Bus Operators Association says many of its members are operating at a loss. President Nisar Ali Shah says the implications of COVID-19 has put the bus industry in a difficult position. Ali says many companies are now unable to carry out maintenance as passenger numbers have drastically dropped, resulting in less to nil profit being made on a daily basis. Whatever comes in, we just we dispense that in terms of fuel and, and the driver's wages. Nothing for the company, nothing for even repairs and maintenance is too hard at this point of time. But uh, this is not going to be forever. The Fiji Agro Marketing Authority will soon be issuing three-year written contracts to farmers in order to ensure consistent supply of produce in the market. Chief Executive Anil Sharma says these contracts will be issued to large-scale farmers as well as new potential farmers. Sharma believes the current management and supply systems are unstructured and volatile. We will be providing a written contract to farmers for a three-year period where we will define the quantity of the produce required, what are the intervals it is required, what will be the price range paid to the farmer, and the obligations of the AMA and the respective farm. The World Health Organization has strongly rejected suggestions coronavirus was developed in a lab in China. It's one of a number of subs unsubstantiated theories about the origins of the virus that are gaining traction. It comes as several nations push for an investigation into China's handling of the crisis. Up ahead, Fiji swimmer Netanya Ross focuses on the... Bula FM, number two and a series. Bula FM, number two and a series. swimmer Netani Ross is doing the hard yards as he prepares for the 2020 Olympic Games. Ross's normal pool training routine has been disrupted due to recent global events, so he has opted to train at their pool at home and the ocean, which he finds a challenge. After losing his dad earlier this year, Ross says he wants to make his father proud and represent Fiji and the Olympic Games. I guess it's really challenging because the ocean has no limit to it. Um, you can't really um, measure how far is it, 50 or 25, or when do you need to turn, or how much underwater work you're doing, and it's the timing within uh, the split meters. And so, yeah, um, just having having really strict pool training and then coming out of that and just making do of the pool you have and, and ocean, ocean swimming. Ross is among the eight swimmers who are vying for the two Olympic quota spot. Fiji Airways national men's sevens coach Gareth Baber is all praises for the players who are part of the essential service. Some sevens reps, including Alusia Nanduva, Aminiasi Tuimamba, Captain Melinder Nalangi and Levi Ikanikonda are on the front line ensuring the safety of Fijians post-tropical cyclone her herald rehabilitation and as part of COVID-19 operations. Weber says he's proud of the players and the responsibility they have embarked on, especially during this difficult period. To see them being able to step outside of that and be responsible and caring for the community and putting the work in, um, I think is you know, a uh, testament to exactly the sort of individuals that we are managing to develop through the program here in Sevens.
The difference in training facilities is proving to be a challenge for 2016 table tennis Olympian Sally Yi as she continues her preparations for the next Olympic Games. Upon her arrival in the country, the Olympic hopeful says she is finding difficulty in training given the more advanced facilities available in Japan compared to the ones in the country. The 19-year-old is, however, optimistic oh. as the deferment of the Olympics will give her ample oh, time to prepare. Long way. The training hall, the facilities, and the training partners, the skills and everything is much more higher in Japan. Well, in Fiji, it's a challenge. Like, the tables in Japan are much new. Australian Rugby League Commissioner Wayne Pierce has confirmed the National Rugby League will definitely restart May 28th. A weak trough of low pressure lies just to the west of Fiji and is gradually moving east towards the country. Meanwhile, a moist northerly wind flow prevails over the Fiji group. Some showers in the forecast for tomorrow and that's your FBC news for now join us at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin remember in times of crisis you need factual news that you can trust please don't believe fake news about COVID-19 on social media fight misinformation by getting only the facts about the coronavirus from verified news sources like FBC's TV, radio, and digital media news, www.fbcnews.com.fj, keeping Fijians connected with the truth. Enjoy your lunch. Bula FM, number two and a Bula FM, number two and